I did a big mistake. Not a mistake because I didn't know, yeah, I didn't you know? know. In Japan, chin chin means. Hi everyone! Welcome back for part 2. In this video we're gonna talk about fun stories, fun facts, fun anecdotes, interesting facts. If you want to take a look at the first part, I will put a link in the corner up there, uh, this corner, and also in the description below. Should we be honest that it wasn't meant to be a video in two parts, but uh, when I was editing the, the video, it was starting to be really really long and I didn't want to make a one hour long video. So because I, we talk too much. We talk too much both, you especially, but me too. So I decided to make a two part uh, video and the second reason is that uh, we were totally out of focus. The last few seconds of the part one, that's how bad the focus was. It was really unwatchable. Let's just start. You want to yeah, start? I'm gonna start. You want to start with the funniest thing the that happened the, the most right away? embarrassing thing okay. that happened. I'll let you speak then. So, you know, in Europe, in Slovenia or in France, when you want to salute yeah, or to, to cheer. cheer, you say chin chin. We were the first or second day uh, of our uh, life in Nagoya. We were having a uh, breakfast, like brunch with, with the trainer. He took us to a restaurant. So and the two of us and not three kids and my coach. Yes. And he doesn't speak English. English. He has this cool thing that translates everything, but he's really young, funny, but he's like really Japanese, so really higher he is obvious and everything. You have to respect him, you have to just show respect, and I did my best. And then when we got some drinks, I wanted to be super nice and I wanted to do a toast. She, she wanted to be Anya, she wanted to be funny and open-minded, you know, open and then she was like chill and she proposed I, a toast. So I did toast with chin chin and the trainer was in a minute looking around he like, was like uh, shocked he, what what, what, shocked, what is she talking uh, and, about and he was like looking around if anyone <coughs> saw anything heard and anything Zach also was and, like and, and then up. Zach was standing up and he was screaming like he chin was chin. screaming in the restaurant chin chin and, and, and the Anya trainer was, also was like you know the was like calm down uh, and we were like okay what's going on what's happening I did a big mistake not a mistake because I didn't know yeah, you didn't know. know in Japan chin chin means a penis. So I was toasting with the trainer of Igor, who we just met, and and I salute him with penis. <laughs> and Zach screaming penis in the restaurant, and so my coach was, was like, oh, it was so don't embarrassing. Scream. So we, yes, he, because he didn't know why she was saying this, so we had to explain that. And of course, I, I I said this story of course did. to the rest of the team, and they made fun of me. Not not made fun of me, but they were laughing, they were laughing with me, yeah. and uh, they found the situation really funny and they were like uh, proposing uh -huh. to toast with me and saying chin chin you know so, so yes, that was the, the that's first may, that's maybe one of the first japanese yes. words that you learned in japan yeah. chin -chin. so for sure i'm not gonna chin chin anymore anyone in japan and don't do it if you come to japan don't um, make a toast with chin chin because <laughs> people are gonna look you a little bit uh weird so. that's a really fun story and that's yeah uh, it's fun that's something I think we we will remember for our of entire course. life, and uh, even the, the the boys they found it really funny, especially when we explained to and Zach. And they repeat it after the, that yes, because it was even more fun now when they know what it was. So yeah, that was the first really fun story from Japan. Let's uh, continue. Not a story, but more a fact, more an interesting fact, like Anya said before. Uh, it's about signing official papers, usually in the rest of the world, where you have a contract to sign or some, yeah, some official papers you sign with your own signature, handwritten signature. So in Japan, you've got your own stamp. It can be a small one, bigger one, uh, expensive one, uh, less expensive one, but everybody got his own stamp. I've got my own stamp and it's my name in uh, in a Japanese sign and you have a small I don't know small ink. pouch with ink inside yeah. and you just tap the ink and then you push on the paper and that's uh, how you sign official papers in Japan so yes it's uh, something that you it's an interesting fact it's an interesting fact and that's also something that you are not uh, willing to you don't want to lose it because if you lose it it's gonna be a pain in a butt to, to replace, to redo, and uh, companies have also one stamp. It's one specific kind of stamp for people, another kind of stamp for, for companies. It's a bigger. It's you know, in Slovenia, you also the companies have their own stamp, you know. Yes, but it's, uh, it's, different a, it's a different it's kind of stamp. Yeah, it's yeah. like the, the, the modern one. Yes. Here in Japan, yeah. it's like really this uh, wooden Old stick. Ink. I don't know yeah. if it's wood or something like this. I don't know the material. There's a way how to hold it. Uh, there is some kind of notch where you put your finger. That's the right way to. It's a, 
it's interesting. You you don't see this uh, before coming here. I didn't I didn't even know that they have stamps. What I have the next to say, it's maybe not so much fact, but a story that happened to me. And, and it's, it's an interesting story. It's really interesting story. I think. It, it always happened to you. You do you always I'm attracting? I'm a magnet. You yes, know, for you're always attracting this kind of people, people and situations. amazing stories, <laughs> situations, mind blowing sometimes. Like what you're gonna say. Yeah. I was in a big mall and you know in Japan when you buy for example groceries they put everything in the basket and then you take um, your basket to the special like a desk yeah. like, like like a table like a desk you that's know? also interesting because it's it's meant yeah. it's meant to not make a, a big uh, traffic jam yes, at the yeah. counters so when you that's also when you pay fact. yes yeah. when you pay you just go away to put your stuff in your bags and so you have time let's go back to the story I was at this table I was with Gaia Igor you were with the boys in Uniqlo and I was with Gaia at the next table there was two um, ladies Japanese ladies one really older one and her a daughter and they were really like impressed with Gaia especially the older lady she was looking at Gaia and she was giving her like small oranges or I don't know what it was exactly so I started to speak with her daughter it was really interesting because she was speaking really good English so that was the first thing that connected us like we say in the previous video Video. Japanese are not so good in, in English. After a um, few words, I explained that we came from France, that we were living in France the, the past few years, and she was starting to speak uh, French. So it was really interesting. She explained me that she traveled a lot. She didn't say a lot, but she was just like explaining that she was traveled to France many times. And I saw that she's like interesting person. So she asked me if I give her my email so that we stay in touch. And of course I did. And two or three days or maybe even the same day I'm not sure I got an email from this lady it was a mind-blowing because with few exchange of email I realized this woman is really special and in fact she is everything that I want to achieve she's a public speaker she's an author she got a Japanese award for written books she is doing a lot of charity work she travels the world she met Pope she met Mother Teresa she knows the grandmother of Obama and we photos to prove it it's not like just yeah, yeah, yeah. stories it's like really wow you what remember my first reaction was like this lady it's like she had already five lives yes you know? she was impressive. living in USA she was studying there then she did a uh, charity work for Kenyan students uh, and and Japanese students and so many cool things you know I was like wow thank you universe for sending me this person in my life to meet her to 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 learn from her experience and to just have connection with such an amazing woman we met her a few times already now she's really the most kind generous uh, lady like really mind-blowing you know that you meet that kind of person like just in the middle of the grocery shop and and I'm I just came to Japan she's Japanese and that we somehow happen to be on the same moment on the same place but then she wrote me an email she said I want to show you my book because you're gonna be so surprised about the cover and I was like okay what can it be no? and she didn't want to say because she wanted to, yes, to she, make she, it she uh, wanted a surprise to make like a surprise you know because it was so interesting for her when we met and she brought her book on the cover it was um, a picture of earth and then her pen name pen name is the name that writers choose to have and her pen name was Gaia which was so mind-blowing you know because she says she never met in in real life any Gaia's she chose this name for for her pen name and she met our little Gaia so for her it was like really interesting it's so funny because this two ladies at that time we didn't know them they were attracted to Gaia especially the mother that's a little yes. bit older she was really enjoying the company of she Gaia you could see that she was happy and she also told us later that uh, her mother was really really happy after meeting Gaia and it's so funny or amazing or mind-blowing that these two ladies connected so much with Gaia for me it's just so interesting you know how life works when you wish something and you have some goals in your in your head and and you really focus on something and then you just suddenly meet so many interesting people that are connected to these goals you know because yes. I'm sure with Chia her name is Chie. I know that we will do some nice things in the future together, even though if it's just exchange of experience or her mentoring me.
me or telling me some things that will help me but it's really just so mind-blowing that that we met just like that in the middle of Japan you know and connected so yeah that's my interesting story from Japan that I'm gonna tell but everyone I know <laughs> she's a magnet to amazing stories amazing people or interesting people she always met somebody like this so the next part I'm gonna talk about it's not that amazing like Anya and it's really funny but it has to do with the fact that we are now living in Japan and Japanese people drive the cars on the opposite side from Europe and the steering wheel is on the right side I cannot say how many times countless times I've wanted to enter on from the left side of the car which is in Japan the passenger side and I was like you know noticing my mistake and I was like just acting like pretending, eh, pretending. <laughs> yesterday evening I went after practice I went to the kombini to take bento and I just opened the door on the passenger side and there were like young guys going next to me and I was like yeah I will just put it on my seat and closing the door and going around like that's what uh, totally what I wanted to do but it was just a mistake because you know when your brain is wired in a way that's also you sometimes you just yeah, want you to wait go wait for me in the car and I want I, I'm just not thinking Rushing you know is. and just going and and I want to open your doors you yes, know and I am just sitting <laughs> like waiting for Anya and you just see opening my doors what you want to say <laughs> just a mistake and also because everything is like different when you want to, to put the blinkers on in Europe the blinkers on the left side and in Japan they're on the right side how many times did I Oh, thinking I will turn on the blinkers and then just the wipers goes on and I'm like again acting like you know no I just wanted to just clean, clean. The, the, the windshield you know just uh, spraying some water on the windshield I must say that driving on the opposite side it's not that difficult it's just you have to get used to it and I must really say the, yes I must say the first time I was like <laughs> telling the boys to stay quiet to let me focus because I didn't want to you know automatically go on the wrong side of the street and you know can be dangerous so I was like you know focus following other cars when turning you know left right I was following the cars and even today almost four months later I'm still sometimes confused and but uh, you, you do a really good job no I do I think I'm I think I'm a, a good driver I don't want to you know attract something but yes it's uh, sometimes overwhelming everything is uh, and I, I the have opposite. to be totally honest I don't drive in Japan no, because she, she doesn't I'm, want to drive I'm, my mummy brains uh, are just too tired to think of all these things but you're just also a good driver you, you're also good. no no <laughs> If she had to drive alone with the three kids behind, it's stressful. So you need um, even more focus. Another small huh? thing I want to add. Japanese people, when, when they speak and how they speak, they like to shorten the phrases like by a lot. You know, when I'm greeting the boys at practice, I'm, you know, konnichiwa. Or if it's the morning, I will say ohayou gozaimasu. So when I come and I say ohayou gozaimasu, the answer is mas. <laughs> Sometimes they are just saying things. I. I don't even know what's the, what's the phrase. I have a teammate, for example, he's the one uh, announcing what we're going to play in attack. And there is uh, one action, Santa Posto, the center for the post, if I say it in a better English. And sometimes instead of saying Santa Posto, he's just Santa Posto. And when, <laughs> when it's sometimes you noisy it or out. when you are tired or during the game, when he says this so fast, sometimes I'm like, did he say this? Should we play this? To make it short, Japanese like to shorten their phrases. It's, it's funny because uh, if you want to learn like me, some Japanese, that's not the easier way to, to learn because you don't know the, the, the real phrase. I have another story. I Let's just remember. It. it was a little bit interesting, but it was a little bit scary story. It was Friday. We have a speakers. You didn't even notice that we have no, speakers I before didn't. this. I, I just saw that we have some sensors for fire. I, I noticed them, but I was not sure what, what was it. Is. Yeah, so it was Friday night, you were still on the training. I just put Gaia to bed, middle of nowhere, alarm sound from the speaker and a woman telling something. And I was like, okay, what's that? I didn't understood a word. I was like, okay, what should I do? If it's maybe something emergency because it was alarm sound, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went to the neighbor, the lady opened and she doesn't speak a word English. But somehow with the gestures, she explained to me that if I understood right, because she was totally calm with her two children, she said that it was a test for fire. Okay, okay, so thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimasu. And I went back home. After five minutes at home, it started again. And I was like, oh, I have to film this. Five minutes later, it started again. But it was really loud. It happened again and again and again. And it was really loud. And I was like, 
okay, this is something going on, you know? And I, the, the biggest frustration was that I didn't understand a word what he was speaking. So I, embarrassed, went back to the neighbor. And when I came to the neighbor, I already saw that she was dressed and her kids was, were dressed. Okay, so it was not that anymore. That was a bad sign already. It, it was not anymore test, you know? And I started to be really, like really nervous because the sound was so, so loud. So I just say, okay, I, I will evacuate. Zach and Mark were already in pajamas and I just say, put shoes on, put your put your jackets jackets on i took gaia she was crying because she was awake because of this alarm oh, nice. and everything i took a blanket i took her jacket the elevators were shut down we live in a 13th floor you know so she so had to carry gaia i had to carry gaia with the blankets and and boys and we were like running and every four floor people were just joining so yeah we evacuated we went down and there were a lot of firemen and and some big um, fire trucks and everything after 15 minutes we were told that we can go back it looked like that the apartment was uh, no one was at home and apartment just somehow the um the alarm sensor, went off they had to break into how do you say maybe break, they break, break into, into the, the the apartment the apartment to see, to see if there is really fire or not in the end it, it was, was nothing i just want to to, to point out what was the most frustrating thing for it's me it stressful. is that i didn't understand what was going on you are not panicking but you know something is not right and you don't know what i wasn't sure if i have to hide with the kids under the table or i have to run out in the end everything was fine but the one thing that's really scary is that you don't know what's happening they should at least say in english like evacuate you know i know we are in japan but there are also i guess a lot of expats living here not speaking japanese no we know we have a speaker yes. <laughs> also know that it's really like really i don't know who told me that when i was speaking this story but someone said to me now you see how safe it is because they are gonna telling you on the speaker to evacuate and then you know it's just a good organization if something yes. is going on so yeah thumbs up for that it's very secure I mean, there is tsunamis, earthquakes, but it's secure. In the next video, what you should do is to show how you're gonna uh, buy and pack the evacuation. Um, yes, because that's also a fun fact. Because that, uh, we have to do that. Also. Yes, I don't know if every Japanese people has it or is it just uh, the a expats. A lot of expats have it. Uh, it's like a backpack. Emergency. Uh, emergency. Backpack. Yes, exactly. Emergency backpack with you know the the essentials, some water and other stuff. It's an emergency backpack that is ready if something happens that you can leave and go to a safe place. That's also something interesting that's a fun fact i never had to make an emergency backpack my earring is falling out so that's the sign that we have to stop <laughs> we will stop here i hope you liked this video please uh, click the like button subscribe to our channel or to my channel until now it's my channel it's in your hands don't hesitate to share it uh, with your friends also it uh, would mean yeah. a lot for because us. you know it's always nice to have a feedback from you guys that um, we actually really know that you are listening to us and, and that you are interested in what we have to say and share the more you do it the more we can comment. share <laughs> comment don't hesitate to comment in the video it's also good for youtube to push my video to for more, more people. people to see it yeah that's thank it thank you so much thank you and uh, we see us in the next video peace